Welcome back to the Pearlworks channel. In the coming weeks, I'll be building some very small apothecary chests. They'll require a lot of dados, so I'm building a crosscut sled to help expedite the process. I got started with the runners and used a piece of maple from the scrap bucket. The miter slots in most saws are about 3 quarters of an inch wide, so that's around the width I was shooting for. The cut was a little heavy, so I nudged the fence over a hair and shaved off some more material. Fit was just about perfect after that. The next step was to cut the material for the bed of the sled. I want this to be a small sled because it will serve as small parts. It'll be 18 inches wide and 12 inches deep. I'm using half inch MDF because it's flat, cheap, and available. I used a few pennies to raise the runners just above the surface of the table, then I could temporarily secure them to the MDF with some CA glue. I set the fence so that I could use it as a reference for square. Once the glue has set, I removed the sled and secured the runners with a few screws, making sure to pre-drill and countersink. After that, I gave it the official slidey test. It passed. This isn't the fanciest crosscut sled in the world, but I still wanted to have some T-track in the back fence so that I could use a stop block. With a flat bottom grind blade, I took multiple passes on the back fence until I reached a good fit for the T-track. This T-track came with holes already drilled, so I pre-drilled the wood and drove in some screws to secure it in place. After that, I secured the other fence, which is the back fence, to the sled using some more screws. This back fence doesn't need to be perfectly square, so just keep that in mind. I've never had my camera cut out the beginning of a clip, but here we are. I ran the sled through the blade, but didn't go all the way to the front edge. Now it's time to attach the front fence. I countersunk a screw in one of the corners, and this will be the pivot point when I check for square. The other corner gets a counter bore and oversized hole so that the fence can be adjusted as needed. I use the 6 inch machinist square to align the fence to the blade. Once it seems square, I pulled the sled back and clamped the fence in place. Then I could sink the pinhead screw. With that in place, I took a test cut. It was about as square as I think I can get it without more precise tools. But if it hadn't been square, I would simply repeat the process. The counterboard screw on the one corner allows for repeated adjustment. With the fence where I want it, I could go ahead and sink a few more screws to keep the fence permanently secured. To keep the blade buried at the end of cuts, I glued on a block to the back fence. This block has a few pieces of tape on the bottom that I removed once the glue was dry. This creates a small gap between the block and the table so that there's a little bit less friction. The last thing this sled needed was a replaceable zero clearance insert for the back fence. I cut up some quarter inch MDF, drilled some countersunk holes, and screwed it to the fence. These inserts can accommodate different width dados and even miter cuts when the time comes. And if needed, I can also create a similar insert for the bed of the sled. With the dado stack installed, I made a few cuts similar to the ones I'll make for my upcoming project. I'm using the Cat's Moses stop block, and so far it seems pretty solid. The boxes I'm making will have material under 12 inches long and 6 inches wide, so this sled will be perfect. Anyway, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching.